Praise the Lord, everyone. Okay, glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, we would like to welcome you to Pentecost of Port St. John. Uh, and to those who are joining us online, welcome. Um, today is a special day. Uh, we're celebrating All Nations Sunday. So, you know, right. Um, we are so blessed that our church um, is composed of different uh, people from different culture. We love the diversity of our people and culture. We're so blessed with that and thankful for that. Now, in um, Psalms 121, it says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from whence my, comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. So, I would like to join us in prayer uh, before we start our worship and prepare our heart and mind for our worship for our service so we can all stand Lord we are thankful Lord God we love you Lord and thankful for this day thank you for Lord Jesus for all the things that you've been doing in our church in our lives thankful Lord God Jesus Lord we thankful Lord God that we come we can come to you Lord for our help always, Lord, that you are there for us, Lord. Lord, we ask you to help us, Lord, to free up our mind and heart and to help us to focus on you, Lord, just on you, Lord, this service, Lord God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Oh, would you let praise arise in this place this morning? Would you worship the King of Kings? Would you give him a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you in this house today. Be magnified, oh God.
Everyone may be seated. I'm sorry. We believe that the heart of God is for all nations to feel welcome and find a home in churches where the truth is preached. Nous croyons que volonté bon Dieu c'est pour toute nation sentir au accueilli et puis joindre en caille dans l'église côté vérité à prêcher. On behalf of Multicultural Ministries and your local church, we welcome you today. Thank you for being a part of All Nations Sunday. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and teach all nations. In Acts chapter 1, he revealed that when receiving his promise, individuals would be filled with power. Power to become witnesses of him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And Multicultural Ministries, we are working to fulfill this biblical mandate by reaching out to every culture that is coming to North America. Currently, we have 16 ethnic-focused ministries, three culturally-focused ministries, and four full-time missionaries who are focused on evangelizing nationalities here in North America. We also have the Global Tracks website that provides soul-winning materials translated in more than 60 languages. The heartbeat of the UPCI is God's heart to reach every nation with His gospel globally and here at home. Our proximity to the Great Commission has never been closer as the world has come to North America. We honor every culture of people who are represented here today. Thank you for your prayers and for your support. I am the UPCI. I am the UPCI. I am the UPCI. I am the United Pentecostal Church. I am the UPCI. Before we uh, take the offering up today, the Tyson offering, I just want to read the uh, quick Bible verse in German and in English. It's Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. Dass in den Namen Jesu sich beugen alle der Knie, die im Himmel und auf Erden und unter der Erde sind, und alle Zungen bekennen sollen, dass Jesus Christus der Herr sei, zur Ehre Gottes des Vaters. And in English, that the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven and things on in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yeah, we can give a hand clap of praise. Today is a very special day. We have All Nations Sunday, and today is Tithes and Offering. All the general offerings are going towards multicultural ministries so we'll have the 
uh, youth come up and take the offerings. There's a saying that Pastor always says that I like to uh, try to do in German. Wenn heute dein erstes Mal hier ist, wir sind froh, dass du da bist. Wenn du das zweite Mal hier bist, wir sind auch froh, dass du hier bist. Das dritte, vier, fünfzig oder hundertste. Mach nur sicher, dass es nicht dein letztes Mal hier ist. So. After the tithes and offerings, we can see there's a lot of people here. Let's uh, shake some hands and make everybody feel welcome. And there's, uh, if you look around, it's amazing how many different cultures and nationalities here are. That's uh, one of the many reasons why this church seemed so appealing to me to see all different people worshiping. God and it's a it's a beautiful thing to be here today so let's uh, shake some hands make everybody feel welcome after shaking our hands we'll have the choir come up Just for uh, a quick break here, after church service today, there is going to be fellowship and food, so stick around. be seated. Amen. Worship with our choir this
Gloria a Dios, aleluya. Glory to God, hallelujah. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? How many can say amen? Amen. Un fuerte aplauso para el Rey de la Gloria en esta mañana. Can we give a clap to the Lord? Hechos capítulo 4, versículo 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Ningún otro hay salvación porque no hay otro nombre bajo del cielo dando a los hombres en que podemos ser salvos. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. No hay otro nombre. There is no other name. Solamente Jesús. Only Jesus. Jesús. Yeah. Only Jesus. Yeah. Jesús. Yeah. Only Jesus. Yeah. En Jesús hay milagros. In Jesus there are miracles. En Jesús hay salvación. In Jesus there is salvation. En Jesús hay sanidades. In Jesus there are healing. En Jesús hay libertad. In Jesus there is freedom. En Jesús hay esperanza. In Jesus there is victory. Hay, en Jesús hay paz. In Jesus there is peace. En Jesús hay vida eterna. In Jesus there is eternal life. ¿Cuánto lo creen esta mañana? How many believe this morning? Si alguien pregunta por qué nosotros creemos solamente en Jesús. If anybody were to ask you why do you believe in Jesus? Porque la palabra de Dios nos dice. Because the word of God says so. Mateo 1:21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Y dará a luz un hijo y se llamará su nombre Jesús. And she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Porque él salvará a su pueblo de sus pecados. Aleluya. For he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. 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 En el nombre de en el nombre de Jesús es poderoso. The name of Jesus is mighty. Amen. Nuestro Dios es grande y fuerte. Our God is great and strong. Yes. Su nom su nombre Emmanuel quiere decir Dios con nosotros. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Rafa, el Señor sanador. Rafa, the Lord is our healer. Elohim, el Dios de Israel. Elohim, the God of Israel. El Shaddai es el Todopoderoso. El Shaddai, the Almighty. Jehová Jireh, el Señor proveerá. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehová Nisi, el Señor es mi victoria. Jehovah Nisi, the God of victory. El Alfa y la Omega, el principio, el fin, dice el Señor. 
He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. El que es, el que era, el que ha de venir es el todo poderoso. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Nuestro Dios es uno y su nombre es Jesús. Our God is one, his name is Jesus. ¿Cuántos lo creen en esta mañana? How many believe that this morning? Que tenemos un Dios y grande y fuerte. That we have one God who is great and mighty. Santiago capítulo 2 versículo 19 dice así. James chapter 2 verse 19. Si tú crees que Dios es uno también bien haces porque también los demonios creen tiembla. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Este Dios que yo conozco es el rey de reyes y señor de los señores. This God that I know is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Si tú conoces este Dios ahora mismo, If you know this God today, puedes danzar, you can, you can dance. puedes gritar, you can cry out in the presence of him. puedes correr, because he has made us to be free to praise his name. Puedes danzar en la presencia de Dios en esta mañana. You can uh, dancing in the presence of the Lord this morning. Porque Él nos hizo libre a alabar su nombre. Because he has made us free to praise his name. Él, él merece toda la gloria y todo honor y merece de toda nuestra alabanza. He deserves all the glory and all the honor and deserves all our praise. Jeremías capítulo 10 versículo 6 dice. Jeremiah 10 verse 6. No hay nadie como tú. Oh Señor, grande eres tú y grande es tu nombre en poderio. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Salmos 135, 5. Psalms chapter 135, verse 5. Porque yo sé que el Señor es grande, y, y que nuestro Señor es sobre todos los dioses. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. We comprehend unto the Lord.
sanctuary this morning. Oh my next to you just for a moment. We're going to turn to the word of the Lord, but I feel like we can bind together. We're already together in this place and lifting up as one voice and one accord, amen, to the God of all heaven and earth. Let's pray together right now that God would continue to bind us together in one accord. Lord, right now, God, God, we just, we multiplied our voices and we brought them together as one. And now, God, Lord, we are connecting our hearts together to be connected with you that you would move into our hearts and our midst, oh God, that from this place we would change, Lord Jesus, our community, our city, our region, our families, oh God, because that's what you do, God, you change things. I pray right now that we would be bound together, oh God, in your spirit, your power today to be changed by you, all nations, one nation, under God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Will you put your hands together just one more time and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We've been waiting since August to do that. I would ask where Jeremiah is. Jeremiah, I don't know where you are in this crowd. Jeremiah Schaefer, where are you? 
He went to the bathroom. I've been waiting since August to give this to him, and when I go to give it to him, he goes to the bathroom. When you gotta go, you gotta go. He doesn't wait for any man. I'm so thankful to see everybody here this morning. And I'm so thankful for the diverse crowd. I, I just have a sneaking suspicion and a, a kind of a insight or insight uh, knowledge from the Word of God that what you see around here today and what you're hearing around here today is going to be a little bit what heaven's going to be like for eternity. Amen. Every tongue, every kid, from every nation, every background, every family origin, amen, is going to be worshiping him around, worshiping him around the throne. And I'm so thankful for that. Revelation chapter 5 and 9, if you have your Bibles, after church, we want to invite you. We have got an all-nations buffet out in the fellowship and area that we want to invite you. And, and we're going to pray. We're going to ask the elders and for young people, if you just kind of wait, we're going to let the elders go first. And I think they're going to be serving. Uh, everybody's going to get served so that we all get a little piece of whatever country is represented down there, whatever culture is represented. And, and I have just taken my, my diet today, whatever I had as a diet, and I left it at home. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Calories don't count in church, just saying. Come on up here, Jeremiah. You finally made it back. I made it to do it. But this is on the 27th day of August of 2023. We baptize Jeremiah David Schaefer in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of his sins. Give him a hand clap for waiting so long. God bless you, buddy. Amen. Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9 says this, And they sung a new song, Thou art worthy to take the book. And open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. I want to preach to you for a few moments to this great group of people that's gathered here on All Nations Sunday of the All Nations Redemption Song. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to be with us. God, we're so thankful for everything that we've felt, everything that we've heard. We thank you, God, for the word that has already come forth, and we're thankful for your name, that is, the name that's above all names, God, but your word, Lord Jesus. You've exalted your word above everything, God, and so we are coming to your word right now, and let our hearts be open to receive your word. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Turn around and give somebody a high five, amen, as you're seated. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, I've been preaching for almost 20 years now. Almost 20 years I've been preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. And just the other day, I, I finally realized how you could make a good sermon. Now, there's a couple guys on the front row that are going to be preaching. Brother Ethan is going to be preaching to the young people. He's kind of asked me to help him up a little, help him out a little bit when he preaches. I, I think that we need to get more of these young men up here and, and preaching and, and hearing the word of, uh, of the Lord coming from them. But this is what I've just learned, guys, is this is how to preach a good sermon. First of all, you got to make sure that you got a good opening, that you got a good beginning. You got you to make sure that your opening is effective and that it's, it's there. And then you got to make sure that you got a really good ending. And the main thing that you got to... You got to focus on is making sure that the opening and the ending are as close together as possible. Then you've got a good sermon. So I'm going to try to do that today because I know that there's lunch and so I won't have a whole lot in between the opening and the ending and we'll get you downstairs for some fellowship. But I'm so thankful that, that we have an all-nation Sunday and I'm so thankful for the all-nation redemption song that I'm going to preach about for a little bit this morning. We are blessed in, at the Pentecostals of Fort St. John that we have such a multicultural and a diverse church. Amen. And I do believe that that's what heaven is going to look like. And, and we want everybody here to be able to sing the redemption song. Isn't redemption such a beautiful thing? 
When you think about redemption, redemption is the action of being saved or, 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 or the action of saving from sin or, or from error or from evil. And Johnny and I were talking about it even this week and how beautiful redemption is, how beautiful it is to come back to that place where you should be. Maybe perhaps you were lost. Maybe perhaps you were off track or you didn't have the right mind. You weren't going the right direction. But your redemption song and your redemption story is that God took you from where you were going to where you were at and he turned you around and he set you back on track again. That's the redemption song that I'm talking about this morning. Amen. I used to be in bondage and I used to be in captivity, but he who the Son has set free is free indeed, and I'm thankful for that. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's a redemption song. I used to be on the outside, but His grace and His mercy pulled me back to the inside. I was going the wrong way, but He got me back on track. Everybody loves redemption song. Pastor Andrew preached just finished with us a very thorough study of Revelation, and I thoroughly enjoyed the, the time that he took to break down Revelation verse by verse for the past few years and share it with us. And from what I see of the book of Revelation where we read, it's not just about the end of ages, which we're getting close to, by the way, and I can't, we cannot leave that unsaid that we're very close to the coming of the Lord. We're very close to the end of this dispensation of time. That everything is about to change because, as you can see in the world, everything is changing. And, and really, the world is about to come to, to an end. And there is an anticipation that's out there, even in the world right now. They know that things are about to come to the end. I shared with the young adults last night that even the world knows, even people that are not uh, spiritual, they know that there's something that's coming. They're equating it to climate change, thinking that climate change is going to result in the end of the world. And I, I'm not going to equate it to climate change. I, I'm going to... I'm not I'm not going to go there at all. I'm not meaning to go there at all. I'm just telling you that what's going to happen and what's coming down the pike is the return of Jesus Christ. That's what's coming to our planet is the return of Jesus Christ. And here's what I see that Revelation, it's not just about the end of ages, but it really has a lot to do with worship and, and who or what we worship. The object of our worship, that's what Revelation is all about. In fact, it's in the title of the book, the one that we should be worshiping, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Everything is about Jesus. From the beginning to the end is all about Jesus. Amen. And we've got to understand that. Worship is at the very core of our being as a, 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 of human nature. It seems like that every one of us are longing and looking for an object to worship. We're looking for something to give our life to. I also shared with our young adults last night that we need not be afraid to share the gospel because people are looking not just for something to give their life to or something to live for. People are looking also for something to die for. People want to know that there's a cause out there that's greater than them that they can live for and in fact even die for. So don't be afraid afraid to share this gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to let your light shine in this dark world. I said last night also, and I, I refer to a lot of things that I just recently said because it comes back up again. We ought not to just curse the darkness without turning on the light. We've got to turn on the light and we are the light of the world. We typically determine what thing we will worship based on our assessment of value. How much value that it has to us. We, we crave to worship on something. We crave to worship on someone. Sometimes it's sports teams that we turn to. It could also be possessions. It could be money. It could be music or musicians. It could be actors or celebrities. God help us if that's our object of worship. But oftentimes that's what they are. Objects of worship. Whatever we deem most valuable, whatever we put value in, that's what we will worship. And we give ourselves to it. We give ourselves away to it in the form of worship. One of the main keys to life is making the right choice on what we will worship. Young people, one of your main keys in life is going to be, what will you give yourself to? 
What will you give? You can give yourself to many things. There are many objects. There's many uh, 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 paths that you could go after in life. But what will you give yourself to in life becomes one of the most main keys and choices that you will have to make. And what we see in this chapter of Revelation 5 is that, we, that all the created angelic beings in heaven, they worship the same thing. If you have heard any of, uh, of what Brother Andrew or Pastor Andrew has shared with us about Revelation, and if you read Revelation 5, you will see that the angelic beings in heaven, they all worship the same thing. In fact, Brother Thomas, he brought up this scripture in James chapter 2 and 19. All of hell with all of the demons and the devil, they fear the same thing. He already read this scripture. If you believe that there is one God, you do well. The devils believe and tremble. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 and 22 that even the earth itself is groaning in anticipation of the coming of of the Lord. You know that's what's happening in our world, a world that is shaken, a world that's going through changes and there doesn't seem to be anything that's stable anymore. What's happening is there is a groaning and anticipation at the coming of the Lord. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. So I'm thinking that that is the one thing and that is the one person that we ought to be worshiping as well. If uh, entire uh, beings of heaven worship him and if all of hell is afraid of him and if all of earth is groaning at his return then he ought to be the one that I worship every single day with all of my heart, mind, soul and strength. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? That's what brings us together here this morning is we're worshiping the one true God and we're lifting him up. This chapter of Revelation 5, John has a vision of a book that is sealed, a scroll, an ancient document that is sealed, a word, so to speak, if you would consider that, found in heaven. This, this, this document, this scroll, this word, it was so precious that no one was found worthy to open it. Because in it held the destiny of mankind. This book was sealed. This document was not just for anybody. And nobody was found in heaven at that time that was worthy to open up that scroll. We find John weeping here in this passage of scripture if you read it. Because no one is worthy to open this book or this word. And just as John falls to his knees in tears and he's grief stricken and saddened, someone appears in the great throne room in heaven and all of creation responds at his presence. Just when it looks like that all hope is lost, someone steps up and all of creation recognizes who it was. All of creation responds to who's about to step on the scene. The one that stepped up was no other than Jesus Christ, who was in the form of a lamb, a lamb that looked like that it had been slain. And Jesus, the lamb of God, opens the book. The only one that is able, the only one that is qualified, the only one that has the ability to do it has done it. And I love it that this same Jesus who opened the book of redemption, because really what the Bible is really all about is about the redemption story of mankind. The one that opened up the book of redemption we see in Luke chapter 4 and 17, there was delivered to him a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, here Jesus is opening the book, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it to the minister and sat down and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears ladies and gentlemen make no mistake that this same Jesus opens and closes the book I said he opens and closes the book the same God we open our Bible with in in Genesis chapter 1 and 1 and read in the beginning 
God created the heaven and the earth is the same one that closes the book in Revelation and said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to every man according to his work shall be. And he says this, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The same one who opened the book is the same one that's going to close the book. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the ending. He's the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come, the Almighty. The same Jesus in all his power and majesty, the one who is fully God and fully man. We can see here in the scripture being worshipped by billions and billions with all of the creatures of heaven and earth falling on their knees in awe and respect of the creator who has become the savior. And the all nations choir begins to sing a new song. I said when he steps up and he opens that book, amen, the one that nobody else could open, the one that nobody else could fill, the all nations choir begins to sing the redemption song. What a sight. What a sight for John to behold. It had only been a few short years since he had seen Jesus being beaten down and led down alleyways with a splintered cross draped across his back, searing into his gaping wounds that the whip had, had, had caused from being beaten and a crown of thorns being smashed into his skull, cutting deep into his head, being mocked and, and being scorned, being spit on and being cursed. And he remembered, John remembered the nails that pinned him down to that old rugged cross and remembered that when he was standing there, He was suffocating slowly while the guards gambled for his robes and mocked him as being a king. John knew that scene very well. It was very fresh in his memory. But now to see him in that vision, to be able to go into that place in heaven and have that vision, and now to see Jesus again in his rightful place, the most powerful being in the entire universe, the one that took upon him the form of a servant, made no reputation, and was created in the likeness of man. He came to open that book of redemption for you and I so that we could be sitting here on this all nations Sunday and have an all nations choir sing a redemption song a redemption song It's not just for the whites. It's not just for the blacks. It's not just for the browns. It's not just for anybody in between. It doesn't matter what culture you come from, what background or race that you associate with. This is a redemption song for all nations. It's for everybody. You might have been drug addicted. You might have been an alcoholic. You might have been this and that. You might have been adulterous. You might have been had a lot of things in your past, but that doesn't matter. You are still qualified to sing in this redemption choir. All we need to do is understand the awesome power of Jesus Christ. Understand what he chose to do for us. He chose to come here on this earth and do what only a loving God could do and save his people from their sins. The one that created us, the one that made us, is the only one that could redeem us. The only one that could save us. We read, it's coming on to Christmas time. and I know it's a little bit early, but Christmas came early up at 105, or sorry, uh, What's, what's our address? 12995 Hilltop Road. That's so many addresses. Came early, but here's what we read at Christmas time. He shall, and I think it was read already today in Matthew chapter 121, and, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. And now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. You see, God wouldn't just satisfy to stay on his throne and let us try to figure it out for ourselves. In fact, we talked about it in our foundations class. He came down off his throne. He came down to heaven, was made in the likeness of man, amen. Took on the form as a man and took on the sin of the world and died for every one of us. He was born of a virgin as it had been prophesied. It was, it was this reason why he was born of a virgin, a virgin, to show that salvation and the redemption of our soul could never come on our own. And we sang that this morning, you are not a God created by human hands. He was born of a virgin. It wasn't anything that humanity could do for themselves. It was something that only God could do for us. Only God could save us from our sins. 
Christmas is a rescue mission, masterminded and carried out by God himself in the flesh. The promise in Genesis is that a lamb would be coming. If you go through the Old Testament, that's why I love when I do a Bible study, and I encourage you, if you're going to know the Bible, you need to start at the beginning. I, 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 if you don't know the Bible from the beginning, you're not going to understand the ending. I want to say that again because you need to get it. If you don't know the Bible from the beginning, you're not going to fully understand the ending. Because it begins in Genesis, and it ends in the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in the beginning, uh, we had a promise in Genesis that a lamb would be coming for the redemption of mankind. The call that we see that was echoed throughout all of the Old Testament is, and Pastor Andrew preached it a few months back, where is the lamb? Genesis said the lamb is coming. The Old Testament question is, where is the lamb? We read this very question in the story of Abraham and Isaac in Genesis chapter 22 and 7. And this is a, this is a, a, a foreshadow. This is a pattern. This is showing us of what's to come. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said unto him, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, we've got fire and we've got wood. You see, a lot of times we've got fire and we've got wood. But where is the lamb? For a burnt offering. That's the call of the Old Testament. Where is the lamb? But look at the prophetic answer that Abraham, the father of the faithful, gave his son that day. In verse number 8, Abraham said, My son, look at this language, God himself. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So, they went both of them together. That scroll, the book, the word that John, the revelator, seen, that only Jesus was worthy to open was the plan that was established before the world began. And was the promise that was given in the garden that we read. And the apostle John, he tied it up in a nice little bow when he opened up the book in John 1 and 1. And he said this, in the beginning was the word. That word, the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Then you read 11 verses later that the word in verse number 14 was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What a powerful revelation that is. John the Baptist Introduce the New Testament with these words. In John chapter 1 and 29 we read, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. After the promise of a Lamb to be provided for redemption for mankind. After all of those years of a cry and a call throughout the Old Testament of where is the Lamb? Where is the Lamb? We now see answered with Jesus coming towards John. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. When Jesus, the Lamb of God, who took the scroll, the book, the Word, as seen in Revelation, and He opened it, is the very same act as the Word, which is God manifesting Himself in flesh, for us to behold his glory as of the only begotten or produced by the Father, our Creator. It's the very same instance, the same God that created us, masterminded our redemption. It's important for us to understand that today, the same God that created us, masterminded our redemption, then he manifested himself as our salvation, and he is the one that's going to be returning to take us home soon and very soon. The redemption song can only be sung in Revelation. I'm going to say that again. I said the redemption song can only be sung in Revelation. For it is a revelation song. We used to sing, there's coming a lamb. And then we sang, where is the lamb? And then progressed to, behold the lamb. And now the all nations redemption song that is sung in Revelation is worthy is 
the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Revelation 5 and 9 again, And they sang a new song, saying, For you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And I love that it reads every tribe, every tongue, every people, and every nation. I know that we haven't said it, but and, and Johnny kind of turned to me as I was turning to the platform. He said, this is All Nations Sunday, but it's not First Nation Sunday. <laughs> it's All Nations Sunday, and it's still First Nation Sunday. But I'm so thankful that it included every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation. Because this fourfold classification continually recurs in the book of Revelation. You'll read it over and over again, and it's powerful. Because it includes, here's the basis of classification of mankind. And all the circumstances that causes separation and divides between men. And all the barriers that we see that mankind has put up, we see is overthrown in heaven. That there is no barriers and there is no restrictions. And it's all done because of the redeeming work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. The thing that binds us all together, we might come from different blood, but the thing that binds us all together, amen, is the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away all of our sin. In heaven, all nations sing a redemption song. I'm coming to a close. I told you I was going to keep a very short time between the opening and the closing. We got a lot of things happening. This afternoon, and I know the weather is not the best outside, but I'm closing. If Sister Melissa wants to come and the music team can step up as well. This past Wednesday, Pastor Andrew finished that Revelation study in Revelation chapter 22. And in it, he read these verses, in verse number 22 and 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that athirst come. And whosoever will... Let him take the water of life freely. Going back up to verse number 1 of Revelation 22, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of nations." Let me just stop here for a moment and share with you that what we've got happening in this place this morning, I believe, is a stream of river. Out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I believe that the living water that flows out of the church of the living God, out of the spirit-filled church of the living God, will result in the healing of nations. Because when the Spirit of God moves, we don't come in unity of culture, in unity uh, uh, of, of language, and we don't come in unity of uh, a family of origin, or a unity of this, or a unity of that. We come in a unity of the Spirit. We're gathered here not, not, not by our own accord, but God, if you are wondering how in the world did I wind up in Fort St. John, British Columbia, some of you, I don't know how you ended up here. You came from places that right now has plus 30 temperatures. But you're here. And I, I, I know why you're here. I know why you're here. God has gathered us. Some of us come from Europe. Some of us come from Asia. Some of us come from Africa. Some of us come from South America. Some of us come from, I don't know if there's anybody here from Australia. Must be too nice down there for them to come up here. Some of us never left. Leave it to the First Nations. Some of you have been here, always been here. But God has brought us together for a reason and a purpose. And I believe that's what's happening in this place. The Spirit of God that we allow to move in this place is for the healing of nations it's for the healing of nations there's a lot of hurt in our world there's a lot of divide in our world and guess what the systems of our world they're bound and determined to divide us even more they're bound and determined to put dividers and put things in between us that separate us 
But that's not what the Spirit of God does. The Spirit of God brings us together. The Spirit of God binds us together. The Spirit of God heals anything that has happened, anything that goes on in our world. The Spirit of God is for the healing of nations. The Bible says in verse number 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him, and they shall see His face. What a day that's going to be. When we see His face, we feel His presence. But on that day, we're going to see His face. And His name shall be in their, for, their foreheads. The Spirit says, come, but I just heard preached recently at a general conference. Brother Aaron Brat Bound said, yeah, the Spirit says, come, but sometimes it's the bride that needs to say, come. You see, we're the bride of Christ and the Spirit of God is saying, oh, come. If you're thirsty, come. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your pedigree is, what you're, you're, you used to do or what you used to be. It doesn't matter. Just come. But a lot of time, it's the bride that has the problem. That's where we're going to be the difference as a church because the Spirit and the bride in Fort St. John says, come. We're all going to sing this redemption song. We're all going to sing this revelation song. We say, God, thy will be done. Has anybody ever prayed that our Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Where all nations redeemed by one God will be singing revelation. The same redemption song that was sung in revelation. When we see his face, make no mistake that there's only going to be one name that comes to our mind. I want you to know this, that when you get to heaven, make no mistake, there's only going to be one name that comes to your mind. And that's the name that is above every name. The name of Jesus is the only name that's going to be on your mind when you see him face to face. I wonder if we could all stand in this place this morning. I'm going to ask for the music team to come behind me. How many want a little taste of heaven down here on earth this morning? I want a little taste of heaven down here on earth this morning. Amen. So what we're going to sing, we're going to sing this revelation song, it's called. And it starts off, worthy is the Lamb. You see what the angels cry around the throne for eternity is holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Something connects us to heavenly places when we as a people will sing the redemption song in Revelation. And I'm wondering today from your hearts, I'm not just asking you to do it from your head, I'm asking you to do it from your heart. Begin to sing the revelation song. Worthy is the Lamb. I wonder just for a few moments right now before we begin to sing, will you lift your hands and begin to give Him praise? Begin to worship Him. Let praise fill this place this morning. Let praise fill this atmosphere this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we come here, God. God, with one purpose and one mind to worship You. That's it. Let's begin to do that. We don't need music. Amen. We've got it, but you can do that on your own. We worship you, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. You are the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. The Almighty God. Amen. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. He is the Lamb who was Give us some words, if you will, Braxton. Holy, holy.
redemption song sung by to all nations. Him who sits on oh yeah, heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. Oh, let's sing it together this morning. The ones and is and is to come. Let's give him the praise this morning. Our heart craves to worship something. You're connecting with a desire in your spirit when you worship him. Golden rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning roll. government, one culture that will have no end. The Bible tells us, we're going to read about it in Isaiah 9 and 6, coming in the Christmas season, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And so before we go downstairs to fellowship, just one last time, can we lift our hands, amen, 
and just give the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords from the depths of our hearts, not just because somebody is asking, because there's something inside of us that's prompting us to do it. God, we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor. We worship you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift you up. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy of my adoration. You are worthy of my life. You are worthy for me to give myself to God. You are worthy for me to trust. You are worthy for me to turn to. You are worthy for me, oh God, to put my affection on in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The last time I'll ask you to do it on this November 5th of 2023, will you put your hands together and give the Lord a hand? I love you. Thank you from all nations. Thank you for making the Pentecostals of Fort St. John your home. Thank you for making this church what it is. Because this is exactly what heaven is going to be just like. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I lied to you. I told you I wouldn't do it, but I'm asking you to do it again. Shake somebody's hand. Make them feel welcome. Amen. If you don't know their name, make sure you introduce yourself to them. Amen. We're so glad to have you out to the Pentecostals of Fort St. John. If it's your first time, welcome. If it's your second time, welcome back. Just don't let it be your last time.